Matthias has defeated a second Ankeg and utilized the burrowed lair as a secure place to rest. He again fell asleep early, overcome by exhaustion and the toxins from the blood vein mold. Fortunately, throughout the night, nothing disturbed his rest. In the dim light of the following morning, he stirs within the dingy, cave-like chamber. A fit of coughing comes over him, and he hacks and spits for a time. I need to make my way back home. Father. Mother. I will return. Do not give up hope. The poisonous spores had sapped his strength the day prior, but he feels his vigor returning. Not to its fullness, but noticeably better than before. The coughing subsides, and he stands up and prepares his equipment. He dons his armor and sets his travel pack, belt, and weapons in place. His throat is parched, and his stomach is empty. Perhaps I can find more food and water today among the trees and the overgrowth, but I must remain ever wary of Bastus. The Serpent Guard could appear any time, anywhere, and when he does, will he attack directly and without warning, or will he engage Matthias in dialogue as he did before? Uncertainty hovers over the young warrior like a specter. He once again gathers the courage to move forward. Seventh star, guide me. Celestial light, illuminate my path. Before setting out, he decides on leaving the heavy crossbow behind. It weighs too much to be worth it. He does take a dozen of the crossbow bolts in case he might need them. Matthias returns to the overgrown labyrinth. The morning is still young, and the sun is not yet visible above the high maze walls and the soaring stone holds. Patches of weeds and other wild vegetation burgeon through every sort of crack and cranny. Ivy and mosses cling to the massive slabs that compose the walls, and trees of all sizes lurch throughout the area. Many of them are laden with vines, and many more have exposed root systems that reach out in tangled sprawls. Tiny insects flit about the half-woods, half-labyrinth, and birds chirp and warble from every sort of perch. Stay alert. Stay alert. He reminds himself again and again. Each step he takes requires his bravery. The neophyte traverses the corridors and sub-chambers and open pockets amidst the plant life and stony structures. It all has a certain familiarity to it, due to his recent experiences here, though it is still not without its confounding complexity. All is calm and quiet as Matthias paces the twists and turns of the labyrinth. He passes by a small pseudo-chamber that has a cauldron in it. It is rusty in some spots, but still in good enough condition for cooking. There are stones set up that support the cauldron, with evidence of it having been used at some point, such as burnt pieces of wood and loosely organized bundles of kindling. Thirst and hunger nag at Matthias, especially the thirst. He takes some time to seek out water and perhaps something to eat. Alas, the only water he finds is a scummy puddle from which he would not dare drink. The only potential food is a green lizard that scurries away before he has a chance to try to catch it. Having wasted an hour or so, he gives up on the immediate section of the overgrown labyrinth and continues with the attempt to pick out his way westward. Corridors and small open sections all look familiar to Matthias as he moves along, keeping quite a good pace. He comes to one of the secure chambers, the one that he had rested the night before last. Again, he does his best to keep a sharp lookout for the Ikoriite that stalks him. 
notices a couple subtle clues that Bastus had been here at the resting chamber. Part of a footprint in the grime of the ground, the door in a slightly different position than how Matthias had left it. Where are you, Bastus? Are you watching me now? The young warrior looks this way and that. All is still. The only sounds are a few buzzing bees and the far-off calls of hyenas. The shield remains strapped to his left arm as much as possible, and his weapons are holstered in such a way that they can be drawn quickly. He is ready for danger at any moment. Again, Matthias seeks out water and food, forging in this new midsection of the plant-encroached maze. He locates a couple thick vines that he is able to reach easily. Cutting them open, he finds inside clear, fresh-tasting water. He slakes his thirst, glad to have found the source of hydration. Not far from this, he finds a copse of trees and shrubs with an abundance of nuts and fruits, more than plenty for him to satisfy his hunger and take an additional heaping handful with him. It is still morning, with the sun shining just above the high walls and between towering stone holds. Refreshed from the food and drink, Matthias readies himself to continue on. He has taken no more than a single step when a familiar buzzing sound rises in the air, coming from over a nearby wall or two kexia flies, a male with its tendril-like scent glands on its abdomen, and a female, which is larger. Matthias darts for cover behind a huge stone structure that has been overtaken by tree and roots. He draws his javelin and prepares to throw it. The two giant insects seek out the potential prey. The female fly hovers down, coming to get at the human below the branches of the tree. When she does so, the spike of metal and wood launches at her from the warrior's hand. The javelin sails past the target. Matthias takes his longsword in hand and holds it aloft, invoking the power of the giant ascendant spirit. The mighty presence spreads out, encompassing him. He steps forward to attack. Power surges through the warrior. The blade flashes and strikes the head from the Kexia fly. The thing crashes to the ground, oozing blood and other fluids. Matthias shouts a tremendous battle cry and stares fiercely at the male Kexia fly. It responds by jittering just out of his reach and releasing a stream of venomous spittle. Matthias blocks the liquid with his shield. The fly creature adjusts its positioning, remaining away from the steel claw of the human. Matthias moves through the tangle of vines and around the corner of the moldering structure. He sheathes his sword and gets his shield unstrapped, and he drops it. By this point, the male Kexia fly has flown up and over the tree, it releases its spittle, though at a difficult range. The grotesque slime spatters Matthias' left arm and shoulder, bringing with it a sickly sensation. He powers through the toxic assault, takes the crossbow in hand, and loads a bolt. He shoots the projectile, but it soars well past the insectile monster. The neophyte hustles around the broken stone structure, trying to find a way to outmaneuver the predatory vermin. The ground is cluttered with chunks of rubble and sprawling vines, making quick movement a challenge. The fly takes a new angle and buzzes angrily. Its trajectory sends it flying on vibrato wings straight at the young man. Its pincer mandibles open to bite the human, but they are met with an attack. Matthias quits the hold on the crossbow draws his longsword once again, and grips it with both hands. He delivers the stroke, which cuts the flying creature painfully. It continues with its frenzied bite. The warrior turns its mandibles aside with an aggressive block, followed by a downward slash. The blade cuts only the air, narrowly missing. Matthias focuses in that same instant bringing the weapon back up. 
He drives the long sword straight through the thorax of the giant insect, slaying it. It sputters to the ground, releases a miserable trill, and curls up. You thought yourself to be the hunter, but I have become the hunter in this labyrinth. As soon as the words pass his lips, Matthias wonders about Bastus. Perhaps he is the true hunter of the trials, wherever he might be. The neophyte takes some time to gather his items, catch his breath, and he assesses the situation. Onward he presses, into the overgrown labyrinth, with the morning sun still ascending in the east. Matthias moves through the wild growths and disrepaired maze sections. For a time, he gets turned around in a confusing series of twists and dead ends, and even goes past a trap that he had previously set off. But after a couple backtracks and retracing of his steps, he exits the overgrown labyrinth at the crumbling basin. He has moved no more than a few paces into the area when he spots Bastus heading in his direction. The two of them halt and lock eyes. <laughs>